It's time for another rebuild and today we're taking over at a championship side once known for causing the biggest miracle in the history potentially of football. We're of course talking about Leicester City. That's right, today's rebuild is with my hometown club, Leicester City. Not only in these five years as manager will we try and take the club up to the Premier League, but instead we'll be going all the way trying to replicate the miracle and win the Premier League title once more. In real life, Leicester are top of the championship by quite a distance and in-game, us and Leeds are predicted to go straight back up to the Prem with the same odds each of winning the title. And we've got some players that are clearly too good for the championship, like Ricardo Pereira, Kiernan Dewsbury Hall in midfield is an unreal talent, and former Manchester City striker Kalecci Iheanacho looks incredible for this division. And we've got young loanees helping us out too, like Callum Doyle on loan from Man City, former Inter Milan player and now Chelsea Cesare Cassidy, and also Abdul Fatou, who actually has an option in his contract to make this move permanent on loan from Sporting Club de Portugal. And we won't have much room to work with either in this first transfer window with zero pounds in our transfer budget and zero in our wage budget. We're gonna have to do some selling before we can buy anyone. With the team we've got and the great facilities that the club has, we should find it pretty comfortable to get back into the Premier League, but to win the whole thing is going to be a different kettle of Fish. Saying that, we're going to make some transfers, try and improve the squad the best way we can and give ourselves the best chance in our first season. And obviously our budgets were quite small and Leicester already had a very good team so I actually opted against bringing anyone in and instead I tried to cut some players out and make the squad a little bit smaller. Firstly, Dennis Pratt, a good player in his own right but I didn't think he was going to get much game time this year so I sent him out on loan to Standard Liège out in Belgium. Harry Soutar was a player bought in by Leicester when they were in the Premier League to be one of their main centre-backs but it didn't quite work out and I just didn't really fancy him as one of the defenders that I want to use in my system so we sold the Australian to Empoli for a few million pounds. Our final and biggest sale though was Hamza Chowdhury who again I kind of looked at the system we were playing and didn't think he'd get much game time considering he wanted to be one of the most important players in the team so we decided to let him go when there was interest. West Ham came in offered us 12 and a half million for the player that was on loan at Watford last year and I actually think that's a pretty good deal in terms of the money that we've bought in for a player that I think I'm quite comfortable with letting move on. Tactically I'm playing a system that is slightly similar to what Maresca has played in real life. It's obviously nowhere near an exact replica, but I'm playing a tiki-taka style where the right back is almost a inverted wing back and he's going to try and come into the midfield as Pereira has done quite a lot, whilst the left back is going to tuck in and almost make a back three with Vestergaard and Faz as our likely main defensive pairing. In the midfield, I'm thinking about potentially making these central midfielders a little bit more attacking to get some goals from them. They're the eights that Maresca likes to use in his team and DD, Dewsbury Hall, Cassidy, whoever he likes in those positions, but I think with the squad here, we're pretty much good to go for our first season. Our best 11 is predicted to be Hermansen in goal. Let's just introduce you to the team. A Danish 23-year-old goalkeeper. Pereira, who we know at right back. Cody as a centre-back option. The former Wolves and Everton player. Callum Doyle, the loan he mentioned earlier. Christensen, who isn't at the club. He's currently out on loan with Serie A side Bologna. In midfield, we've got former Tottenham player Harry Winks, Dewsbury Hall and Dennis Pratt, who you've met out on loan. Mavadidi on the left, who's a very talented wide option coming in from the French divisions. Yunus Agkun is a loney from Galatasaray who's playing on the right and Ian Acho who of course you know up front and we've also got Ndidi, Vardy, James Justin, Pat Sandaka, Vout, Fez or Brighton amongst many other big names on the bench too. So we've got a very good squad. I expect us to do very well in this first season so let's simulate the first year and see how we get on. Before we see the results for season one though, I wanna ask you guys to do me a huge, huge favor. Just scroll down for me on the video and click that like button. You can forget you ever did it, it's completely free, but it really does help me out in the YouTube algorithm side of things of getting this video promoted to more people. So thank you to anyone who does that. And if you are in this pretty big percent of people that aren't currently subscribed to the channel, but are watching the videos, please, please, please hit that button because we're getting so close to 30,000 subs. Any support towards that target would be great. And comment down below what rebuild you want to see next. Every rebuild we do is based on your suggestions. And the final thing, don't worry, we are done, is that if you want to carry on this save yourself or check out any of the save files previously from our other rebuilds, you can get access to those over on my Patreon, which is linked in the description over there. You can support me as a creator. And in return, you get the save files for season one, two, three, four, and five of every save. So you can take over whenever you like and continue them. I'm a bit out of breath there from plugging so many different things, but we're ready to go see how our team did in our first 
year. And whilst it wasn't pretty, we have been promoted alongside Leeds and Norwich, but we actually finished in third place, joint with Norwich in second, so we didn't get an automatic promotion spot, and instead we had to go through the playoffs against teams that had done nowhere near as well as us. And that was Blackburn, Birmingham and Ipswich. After beating Ipswich across two legs in the semi-final, 8-2 on aggregate, we face off against Birmingham in the playoff final, where this goal from Ian Acho in the 13th minute was enough to take us to the Prem. And whilst Ian Acho did score 29 goals this year, he was not our best player. In fact, Vardy and Didi, Cassidy, Dewsbury Hall, Hermanson, Mavadidi and Fatawu all were considered better players this season across a bunch of games. Lots of them contributing with goals. Cassidy with 13, Mavadidi with 14 and Vardy scored 16, but he is now retiring. We're going to offer him a coaching role. So it's time to say goodbye to him. He bowed out with a great championship season to get us back into the Premier League where we belong. And we've got a great budget to work with in season two with 37 million pounds to spend and 600k of wage budget we can now really go about revamping the squad how we like but first i think we'll need to trim some players and speaking of trimming that leads us very nicely onto the sponsor of today's video which i'm absolutely delighted to say is the fantastic people over at manscaped to have sent us the lawnmower 5.0 ultra that's right not the 1.0 not the 2.0 this is the 5.0 so you know it's going to be top draw and from my own experience now of using this it genuinely is if you're someone that maybe in 2024 has a new year's resolution of taking better care of themselves or you just want to keep on top of your grooming then this this is what you want to go for. Genuinely, this has been an absolute game changer for me, and I'm sure it will be for you as well. Now, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, which I'm spinning round in my hands here, apparently that's going to give you a better look at the razor, comes with an interchangeable dual head system, which basically means there's two attachments. The first one is what you might think of when you think of a trimmer, which comes with combs of different lengths, so you can really groom to whatever length that you feel like, or if you want a bit of a closer shave, a more skin-like feel, then you can use their new foil razor again very easy to pop one off pop the other one in and then you're good to go both have manscaped skin safe technology which is going to reduce the chances of nicks and cuts which you really don't want particularly when you're shaving down there. But my favorite thing about this trimmer is the fact that it's waterproof, which means you can use it in the shower. There's less mess, less cleanup, and it just makes it easier to maintain knowing you can just grab it quickly in the shower and give yourself a bit of a trim. If that wasn't enough, there's a travel lock. And also if I turn this on, you should hopefully see there's a light here, which means when you are grooming in places where it's a little bit dark in those cracks and crevices, this light is definitely going to help you out. So yes, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, if you want to get one for yourself you can follow the links in the description and if all of those features weren't enough for you you can also get a 20% discount using my code jcfm at checkout so thank you very much to manscape for sponsoring this video it's very easy to do a brand deal when you genuinely believe in the product and i definitely do with this so give it a try and with that being said let's get back to the transfers Vardy and or Brighton's contract expired last year and we also sold one of the other older players in the team, Danny Ward. He's moved to Stuttgart for 1.2 million. We had a lot of goalkeeping options and Ward wasn't one that I was going to use. Despite showing a lot of promise, I have decided to sell Casey McAteer as well. As good as he's been doing in real life for Leicester this season, last year he didn't really do that well for us in the championship and I expect him to get less game time in the Prem. So we've sold him to Sassuolo for 3.5 million. We've got better players in that position and he wanted to make the move as well so it works for both parties. Luke Thomas has also left the club. He was on loan at Sheffield United last season and now was wanted by Bundesliga side Hoffenheim and I thought you know what let's rid our hands of him. £10 million for the academy grown product. Yes sad to lose an academy player but I just didn't really think I was going to use him and I don't really rate him despite the fact that his coach report is so glowing. But our biggest sale of the window was kind of taken out of our hands with Valtfast leaving. The Belgians move into Leeds and will play alongside fellow Belgian Pascal Streich there in a double Belgian back line but 36 million for a man that cost us 13 million only a season or so ago is a pretty good turnaround he was one of those where once a bid came in he was unsettled he'd asked for a big contract here as well and I wasn't willing to give him such a big deal so I figured it made sense and we did have other targets lined up to replace the Belgian international and we did sign a lot of players so I'll try and move through these quite quickly but one of our biggest signings was Anel Ahmed Hozic who played for Sheffield United last year I believe was their captain him when they were in the Premier League at only the age of 25. The Bosnian is a leader at the back, a great ball playing defender. I think he's better than Vout Fez and comes in as one of the mainstays in our back line now. Some extra depth at centre-back was provided by the signing of Taylor Harwood-Bellis who we 
we got for a minimal fee of only 2 million. He's been playing for a bunch of very talented championship clubs, including Southampton last season. The Man City youngster wasn't wanted there anymore, though, wasn't getting his chance. So we gave him only 2 mil and got a centre back that is potentially a future England international if we develop him right. A very big talent who, with the right growth, could be a big player for us. Back when Leicester won the league, they were known for picking up some gem players that other teams hadn't really thought about, like N'Golo Kante when they signed him, and of course Riyad Mahrez, who they got for peanuts and went on to be big players for them. And we're hoping we'll get a similar performance from Lucas Asadi, a 20-year-old Chilean international with great attributes who we've picked up from Universidad de Chile, out in, of course, the Chilean divisions. £3.2 million was the fee for a winger that I think is going to offer us a lot, and if he develops right, could become one of the world's best in his position. Chelsea weren't willing to reloan us Cassidy for the season, even though we made the offer and he wanted to join. Chelsea wanted him to play his football somewhere else next year, so we needed a new midfielder, and in comes Albert Grombiak, whose name I've definitely butchered a pronunciation of, but he is a Danish 23-year-old who I'm going to call just Albert from now on. A six-foot-one creative midfielder who can score and can dribble well, a very good ball carrier, and someone that we're happy to add to our team, coming in from Bodo Glimpf for only 5 million. Speaking of 5 million, that's what we paid for Francho, a Spanish 22-year-old midfielder who can operate in that number 6 position or as one of our midfielders. He comes in from 2nd Division Spanish side Real Zaragoza, where he was exceptional last year, a very good pivot player to have in our midfield, and fingers crossed this one will work out. Leicester fans will be happy to know we made the signing of Abdul Fatawu permanently. The Ghanaian has impressed in real life on loan, and he did as well in this FM world with 7 goals and 6 assists in his first season. Season, he definitely is a good sign-in for the clause in his contract, which was 14.5 million to make the loan permanent. A free transfer, but a good one, I think. Brandon Williams offers us some depth at both left back and right back for completely nothing, let go by Manchester United. He played for Ipswich Town on loan last season, has been to Norwich and played quite a few times for Man U as well. Whether he's going to be a star for us is another question, but for free, he definitely makes sense as cover in both areas. We're still not done though. Another free transfers came in, one of which was Zeno de Bast, one of the most promising young Young defenders in world football, a 20-year-old Belgian international who already has nine caps coming in from Anderlecht for 24.5 million. Again, another one that was on loan at Ipswich last season. He is one of the best passing defenders in the world, and he's only 20 with 16 passing, 14 technique, and 14 vision. Combined with a good physical presence and good defensive elements to his game as well, the Bass is going to be a star if we get his development right. With Vardy going and Daka not really favoured at the club, we needed some competition for Ian Atchew up front and I've decided to go for a player that I don't know too much about myself. His name is Matteo Retigui and we have bought a 25 year old in. He's came in from Genoa for 21 million after a good season for them having played all of his football before in Argentina. Two goals in three Italian caps suggest he could be one of the best players that we have bought in this summer being the Italian national team striker. He's got good physical attributes, a good finisher who's going to work hard as well, a true pressing forward who's very consistent according to his coach report. This could be a very good Jamie Vardy replacement. And finally, Leicester like signing right-sided wingers who are Algerian who like to cut in on their left. It worked with Riyad Mahrez. And we signed another one here, Mohamed Bellumi, coming in from the Portuguese division. £7 million is the fee. Him and Fatui will battle it out on that right-hand side. A very good player, comes in as one of our best, can score, can create, and can dribble past the man as well. And with the Algerian international sign, this is what is now considered our best 11. Hermansen is still the goalkeeper. Pereira is playing in that right-back spot with Christensen as a left-wing back. Bologna did not make his permanent deal and we are very happy about that because he is a very, very talented player of a Dane. We've got Cody and Ahmed Hozic supposedly as our best centre-back pairing with Winks, Francho and Dewsbury Hall as the midfield. Fatuu, Mavadidi and Iheanacho up top. Very similar to the team we had in the championship but with some extra talent now and some extra squad depth and that will hopefully give us a good chance in the Prem where we're predicted to come in 13th place. Nowhere near title favourites of course just yet but considering where the other promoted teams are I think we can be pretty happy that we're not considered a relegation candidate. Just to show you as well, Mark Brighton is now an under-18s coach for us, as is of course Jamie Vardy, and hopefully if we keep giving them some new coaching qualifications, they can actually become pretty good coaches in their own right. And with all of those transfers complete, we were ready to head into our first season back in the Prem, hoping to take the league by storm as Leicester once did all those years ago.
And it really wasn't the best season, but we can certainly take the fact that we stayed up as a positive. As Leeds and Norwich all got promoted and all of us survived, including Norwich predicted 20th, finishing in 10th place. We got 42 points and managed to beat out Leeds to that 16th place spot with Burnley, Brighton and Wolves getting relegated. Really, we were nine points away from that relegation zone, but we wouldn't want to be anywhere close to it, to be honest. So it is a shame that we are in that 16th place spot. That being said, we did win 12 games across the season, which is far more than any of the other relegations candidates. So I think we can be pretty happy with that in the fact that we've stayed up, but we want to definitely do better in season three, four and five. We don't want to sit around in these low positions for too long. The cups we weren't great in, fourth round exit of the Carabao to Burnley and the Emirates FA Cup knocked out in the third round. Our best performers this year to build around for the future are Dewsbury Hall, who had a great season with eight goals. Christensen was good at left back. And outside of that, there wasn't too many great performers. DeBass did well when called upon, but didn't play that much. Only six starts and eight substitute appearances. Appearances. He's now unhappy. Ian Acho got 21 goals and Ahmed Hozic was pretty impressive at the back too. But we'll want more goals from across the team because really we didn't have too many good goal scorers here. The biggest surprise out of them all was Reti Gyu who came in, only played seven times, three starts and four bench appearances. And suddenly he doesn't look like the best striker after all. When we signed him, I thought we had a real talent on our hands. But fear not, if our team isn't doing well, it's nothing some money can't fix. And we've got £52 million to spend in the next transfer window. Just to show you financially, we do have 87 million pounds in the balance and in terms of the debts there isn't really too much there so we are doing okay financially which Leicester weren't for a little while I believe they were struggling financially in that season when they got relegated which prevented them from buying many players to help them stay up in the Prem uh, but now things do look good financially so we're looking good and hopefully in season three we can bring in some new talent to reinvigorate this side. Firstly though, let's talk about the players that we sold and Brandon Williams was one of those. We bought him in last season. He played a few times for us, but not enough for his liking. 14 appearances, only two starts, wasn't enough. So he wanted to leave. Watford came in for 10 million. And even though we lose a player that we bought in last season, it's a quick turnaround, got him for free, sold him for 10 mil, easy profit. We also said goodbye to Bubakare Samare, who in the first year was on loan at Sevilla, came back and only played four times for us in the Prem, has five appearances over the last two years. So it was lucky that middle Middlesbrough came in and offered us anything. 9.5 million isn't a bad fee for the Frenchman. Looked like he could have been good when Leicester first signed him. Never worked out. So we take the cash and we reinvest. Harry Winks has moved on as well, moving to Fulham in the Premier League for 5.5 million. Signed for 10 mil, gave us two good seasons, but we're ready for something different. And he did only start eight games last time out. So he did want to move on. And surprisingly, we had some interest from Connor Cody. Saudi Arabian sides came in as well as Everton. And he decided he wanted to go to Everton where he was loaned to a few few seasons ago from Wolves. He's played for Leicester for a couple of years, played 36 times last season as a starter and has now moved on for £12 million. So yes, we did lose one of our main centre-backs, but I think we replaced him quite well. And for a good fee as well, because for only £165,000, we found this guy at Sparta Prague, Ladislav Krejci. He's a Czech international with 25 appearances, heading into his prime at the age of 26, who can play as a centre-back or as a number six in the midfield with great physical ability, strength and a big presence at six foot three. He is a very good option to bring in for so cheap. The reason that he was so cheap was that his contract was expiring. So Sparta Prague were taking any money from really. And I think we've ended up with a very good player on our hands. We've reinvigorated our right back position by signing Guile Rosas here. He's a 25 year old Spaniard coming in from Sporting Gijón out in the second division of Spain. 8.75 million is a bargain for the player that we're getting. I think he could be a future Spanish international with the ability that he has here. If he plays well, I think we're on to a winner. Facundo Palestri, available as a free agent from Manchester United and the Uruguayan can give us some depth on either wing. Manu never really used him too much, went out on loan to Ipswich last year in the championship and did well. He's a decent player. He won't play much, but he'll give us some depth and hopefully play a few appearances across the course of the season. And our final signing, maybe the one I'm most excited about is Argentinian 22 year old Federico Rodondo. Now we only use our scouts recommendations in these videos. I don't use my own knowledge. And I also try not to sign the same players in every single rebuild. I actually often try to avoid any players that we've signed before, but Redondo, we signed in a rebuild previously and he didn't look this good, nowhere near this good. So I think in this particular football manager world, he's just developed really well at Argentinos Juniors where he's been exceptional for three seasons. 5.5 million was a bargain fee from the Argentinian leagues and he's now a 50 million pound value player with great ability in all areas. I think we're on to a star of a midfielder. So we actually operated in a transfer net profit this year, selling more players than we actually 
actually spent money on. And I think we actually came out of that though with a better squad than what we initially had. Hermansen's still our goalkeeper, but he's now got a new defence in front of him with Rosas, Ahmed Hozic, Krejci and Christensen, all of which were not with us when we were in the championship. Francho in the midfield alongside Redondo and Kernan Dewsbury Hall. We've also got Fatuu, Asadi and Ian Acho. And you'll now see we have changed the mentality up a little bit. It's now a Gagan Press style. A lot of the roles we're using are quite similar, but this is less Maresca ball and more Jurgen Klopp style of football now. We've got the players to do it. We've got the energy and I'm hoping we can take the league by storm with our attacking intent. I think with the players we've got, we can definitely pick up a lot of points. And we did actually do very, very well this year. Quite like when Leicester won the league following up a disappointing season where they just escaped relegation, we nearly did the same. Last year, we finished in 16th place. This year, we jumped all the way to third, but not only third, we were only one point away from Man City, who eventually did win the title. They would have had the goal difference over us. We were joint second place with Chelsea, the same amount of wins, the same amount of draws, and the same amount of losses. To know that we're competing with the likes of Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, and Man City at this stage shows we're definitely going in the right direction and we also got to the Carabao Cup semi-final where we were knocked out by Crystal Palace. Our tactical change definitely helped but actually a lot of our players performed above and beyond where they did last season. Dewsbury Hall finishes our best player again but Redondo got four goals and Retigui here did come in and finally showed why we initially signed him scoring a few goals off the bench 13 in fact across the course of the season. Mavididi got three goals Franco with six Ianacho got 21 and it was a much better attacking performance across the board from our team and we also so weren't shipping as many goals anymore. And that is now going to mean going into season four of our Leicester side is actually a European team. We are going into the Champions League with that third place finish and hopefully we can do fairly well in the new Champions League format with that league phase. You can also see we've been improving the facilities over time, starting to get better youth recruitment and academy coaching and it is leading to some great young players coming through like this guy called Greengrass which is a great name. But despite our third place finish we're still only predicted 13th place for next season but we do have 70 million pounds to spend so with the right incomings and the right outgoings I definitely think we can improve that predicted place. Just to let you guys know as well, we do have a Football Manager Discord linked in the description down below should you want to check that out. The Discord has over 700 members, a great community of people ran by some brilliant moderators over there. You can talk about real life, you can talk about real life football, or you can just talk about Football Manager. Lots of people share their saves, share their wonder kids, ask for help, ask for advice, whatever you want. That Discord is the place to be if you're an FM fan. But let's see who we signed in Season 4. And once again, we've made lots of profit from sales before we've reinvested it into our team. Firstly, the Algerian Mohamed Belloumi who he signed a couple of seasons ago hasn't been playing as much as he would have liked playing a lot but mainly as a substitute last season so he wanted to leave in came Norwich for 39 million rising to 41 we paid 8 million pounds for the guy that was a brilliant deal we sent Mavadidi out on loan as well I didn't think he was going to get enough game time this year with the incomings that we did have already wasn't playing much last season with only three starts so he is playing for Nantes in France for a 2 million pound loan fee Wilf and Didi's time at the club was up at the age of 29 he wasn't playing as much anymore so he goes to Ukrainian side Shakhtar for 9 mil. Retegui ended up not being the worst transfer in the world because after a decent season last year Al Ali came in and offered us a little bit more money than what we initially paid for him and considering he scored seven goals in 27 appearances for 21 million I was happy to take the money and get a new striker through the door. And also this happened as well. Atto Amper moved to Fulham. Now I don't know who this guy is. It looks like our director bought him in from Chelsea on a free transfer. He played 20 times for our under 23 side and Fulham have then offered seven mil rising to 11. His only season so far being in the National League. I don't know who told Fulham he was that good because attributes wise, he isn't the best, but you know what? We'll take the money, we'll reinvest it, I'm not going to complain. So with those sales and the season we had last year, we needed to sign players that would help us regularly get into the Champions League and we have signed a good backup right back. We want good depth in every single area. Max Aaron's coming in from relegated Bournemouth who came up to the Premier League, got relegated, came up again and got relegated again last season. So we've bought him in. £21 million is the fee for an English 26-year-old who comes in as a good option on the right-hand side. We sent Retegui to Al Ali and in return we took off them 
Alan St. Maximan, the former Newcastle entertainer, played three seasons out in Saudi Arabia, did very well, and then was available as a free agent. He's obviously got his paycheck from Saudi, wanted to come back to the Prem. He's coming to Leicester, and I think is a great option on either wing. Speaking of win options, Ernest Nawama comes in as a great free agent's pickup. Our scouts had him as our top target for this summer. We have signed him in one rebuild previously, I believe, but available as a free agent, it's hard to turn down a man who's been doing so well, both in France and in Belgium. So in comes Nawama. We've got two Ghanaian wingers now, Fatou on one wing and Nawama on the other. In what is a real coup for the club, we have replaced Wilf Ndidi with a 22-year-old French midfielder, Lucas Guana Dwarf, who, if you don't know, in real life is tooted as the next big thing, currently playing for RB Salzburg in the midfield. A lot of people think he's going to go right to the very top. Here, though, after three seasons, he was still at Salzburg. We paid 33 million, beat out Manchester United to his signature and get a very good defensive midfielder. But our main signing this summer is Victor Jokerez, sporting Lisbon striker who's been tearing it up after his move from Coventry, was available. Of course, we sold Retigui and also Ian Acho isn't getting any younger. So in he comes for 42.5 million. Yes, he's 28, but he's in the prime of his career, ready to score goals. And he looks like an unbelievable forward. And in the Portuguese divisions, he's made light work of it. So hopefully he can do the same for us. And our team is massively changed from the championship side we inherited, but there's still one player in every single area that is a current Leicester player, Hermansen, the goalie. In defence, we've got Christensen, who is still currently at Leicester, Dewsbury Hall as a midfield option, and then Fatou, who's on loan in season one, is still our best right winger, supposedly. Jokerez, St. Maximan, and Guanadarf all coming in to our best 11 here. We've got such a good squad. We're predicted 10th place now with 50 to 1 title odds, so things have definitely got better in that sense. But whether we're going to get third place again is another question. Competing in the Champions League is not going to be easy, but we'll do our best and hopefully get another top four finish. Talk about getting top four. We've actually gone and won the whole thing. Winning the double this year, actually, with a Carabao Cup win and a Premier League win with 81 points ahead of Man City and Chelsea. Only three points more than what we got last season, but it was enough to get us a title and the Carabao Cup. So let's take a look at how this season went. It looks like we had a great run of form as the season went on. The season started quite well as well. This month in December looked to have been an amazing month as we won pretty much every game that we came across. The Champions League as well, we made it all the way to the quarterfinal, losing out to Liverpool, but beating Leverkusen on the way. The Carabao Cup win was a penalty shootout win against Manchester City. But one of our best wins was this one late in the season against Chelsea, who are of course a title contender with us come the end of the year, where Dewsbury Hall equalised for us in the fourth minute after an early Nicholas Jackson goal. Then in the 27th minute, Fatou found the ball in the box, took a shot and put it straight past Kepa, who is somehow still the Chelsea goalkeeper all the way four years on here. And then in the 96th minute, I believe it was Nuwama, who I imagine will be coming in somewhere near that back post right now. It's played across to him. He took it in. It takes a deflection, but we didn't care. And that was us on our way towards a title. Redondo, Dewsbury Hall, Jokerez, Asadi doing well this year, as well as St. Maximan with 10 goals. Goals from all across the park, really helping us towards that title push. We can be very happy with that. Winning the double and now going into our final season, we've got £58 million to spend and 300 grand in the wage budget to take this team one step further. We've won the Premier League, we've won the Carabao Cup, I wanted to do that in five seasons, win the Prem, we've done it in four, so now the aim has got to be to win the UCL. Again though, before we brought any players in to improve the squad, we let some go with James Justin moving on to Sheffield United for 18 million. Not a bad fee for a 29 year old, considered a last resort option at this point. Zeno de Bast has gone to Club Bruges out in Belgium, his home nation of course, and I think it kind of worked out for the best for us. He never really hit the heights that I thought he could. We get a fair chunk of our money back that we initially invested on him, potentially rising to 20 mil. So we wash our hands of de Bast, thank him for his service, and we'll get someone new in. And we will need to as well because Ladislav Krejci, who was a centre-back option for us, has now moved to Al Nasser on a 500 grand a week contract out in Saudi Arabia for 37 million. In two seasons, we turned a 165k player into a 37 million pound sale. Leicester have done something similar with Kante, similar with Mares, and we're continuing the tradition with Krejci. Max Ahrens was a good signing for us, but then Chelsea came in and offered 40 million pounds for him, which we weren't going to reject, turning a 20 million pound profit in one season. He wanted to go to Chelsea. We were willing 
decision to let him go because he was only a backup right back after all, starting 17 games, appearing off the bench 21 times. Made sense to move him on. And finally, Steffi Mavadidi has moved on. He's gone to Altai out in Saudi Arabia. The Congolese international is now valued at about 30 million and we got 15 mil for him on the last year of his contract, which wasn't too bad. We probably would have sold him for a lot less, but his season out at Nantes really raised his stock with a good year in the French division. So he moves on and we get some more cash to buy some new players. And we only bought in four players, but we went for quality over quantity. Firstly, we have a new striker option. Ian Acho has left the club at the end of his contract. So to go alongside Jokeres up front, we have an 18 year old. His name is Martin Papasiak. And I'm hoping the Czech international can compete with Jokeres over time. And as Jokeres gets older, he'll slot straight in. And we won't have this whole issue that Leicester have at the minute, where they're still really trying to find their Jamie Vardy replacement. Antonio Silva is a world-class signing for us. The 23 year old Portuguese international is valued at 90 million we've pulled him in to 55 million on a release clause from Benfica where he's been exceptional he is one of the world's best center backs he's now playing for Leicester and we have a great back line and we're adding more young leaders to the team as well with Fresh Nader joining us now he's a Spanish right back who's coming in from Sporting Club de Portugal where he's been exceptional for a few years having moved from Real Valladolid 42 million pounds is the fee for the right back coming in to replace Max Ahrens for pretty much the same money we sold him for and he has a lot more potential as well because Fresh Nader in FM can definitely be the best right back in world football. And finally, a bit of extra depth at both left back and centre back. Callum Doyle of Manchester City was with us on loan in season one. He hasn't played much since those days, but he was now available for £5 million. We've bought him in and he's a decent squad option at the age of 23 with four international appearances for England. We're happy to have him here. Just to show you as well, Mark Brighton has become a very good coach at the club and is still developing with his coaching qualifications. And I actually think he could go on to be a pretty good manager just someday. And Jamie Vardy is now a first team coach at Leicester, started in the under 18s, but he keeps developing. And again, I think he could go on to be a manager of a club. He's got a good reputation. He's 40 years old now, and it's probably about right that he goes and takes a full time job. And we have created what I think is actually a mega team here. I think Freshnader, Antonio Silva, Dwarf, Redondo, these are guys in real life in five years' time we might be talking about as some of the best in the world. Alongside that, we've got some great talents like Fatuu, Asadi, Jokerez, who is already one of the most sought after strikers in world football what a team we have put together we've got great players on the bench as well Palestri, Saint Maximan, Rosas, uh, Harwood Bellis is still doing well, Nuama as well this is a stacked 11 and we're going to see how we can do in our fifth and final season and whilst we didn't win the Champions League, it was not a bad season at all. Winning the FA Cup and the Community Shield was a great result. Runners up in the Carabao Cup and third in the league. So again, a Champions League space and only a few points off the title. Us, City and Chelsea seem to be the best teams at the minute. And then in the Champions League, we got to the quarterfinals where we were knocked out by Bayern Munich, but only in penalties. So we really did ourselves proud. Along the way, we knocked out Barcelona 3-1 on aggregate. That would have been a great game. And we also knocked out Nice in the playoff rounds. In the FA Cup, we beat Manu in penalties. They scored early on through Joshua Kimmich in what is an absolutely stacked Manchester United first 11. But then in the 23rd minute, upstep Callum Doyle. Didn't start many games this season, but it didn't matter. The former Man City player headed the ball past the Man United goalkeeper. And then Ivan Frejneda, the new signing, could step up to win as the FA Cup. And he did exactly that, planting it in the bottom right. The Community Shield was a 2-1 win against Everton, where in his first game for the club, Pat Prasiak came in and scored in the last minute which is great to see and he's developing nicely some great performances across the board from lots of different players we have got a team that can contribute from every single position we're no longer a one-man army and if we have a look we've got brilliant facilities a four-star reputation and financially the club is swimming in the money with 128 million pounds in the balance and no debts at all we have smashed it in this rebuild don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed and let me know what rebuild you want to see next thank you for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye Bye.